Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. The Irish Nationalist Proclamation of the Republic of Ireland, made from the steps of the General Post Office on Easter Monday, 1916. In the fierce battles that followed, the General Post Office and many other buildings in O'Connell Street were destroyed. They weren't the last. By the time the Irish Free State was established by the Anglo-Irish Treaty of 1922, war against the British and the Civil War had badly damaged many Dublin landmarks. The four courts and the Custom House lay in ruins, and the new state had to decide what to do with them. As far as I can see, there is no overt policy. The, the actions of government can show that there was a policy for rebuilding certain buildings and for not interfering with others and allowing them to decay over time. The government put Dublin's damaged buildings in the hands of the Office of Public Works. This department of the new Irish state, a survival from British rule, was responsible for rebuilding. The, if you like, driving force behind the OPW's actions in restoring the four courts, the Custom House and QPO, I would say was mainly from a functional point of view. Um, that's not to say that they weren't conscious of the uh, history of these buildings and the fact that they were by particularly famous architects. Gandon in the case of the four courts and the Custom House, Johnson in the case of the uh, GPO. Uh, but there was a degree of functionality, and that is one of the key elements. The cash-strapped government laid down two key principles for all rebuilding. Firstly, only Irish materials could be used in restoration. The Custom House is a clear example of this. Originally built throughout in Portland stone from England, the reconstructed dome used a darker native Irish limestone. The government's second principle shows the complex relationship between the nationalists and their country's past. The government decided to abandon certain buildings. Dublin Castle was one, and the RHK, the Royal Hospital in Kilmainham, was the other. Um, one of them, Dublin Castle, was the seat of British power, and the Royal Hospital in, Kil in Kil Kilmainham was where the uh, commander of the British troops in Ireland lived. And in the case of Kilmainham, it was used as a kind of a dump for National Museum material. The abandonment of Dublin Castle was a very specific thing. There is nothing written on it, but there is uh, an anecdote that when de Valera came to, to power in the early 30s, uh, his followers wanted Dublin Castle raised to the ground and simply to obliterate the memory of the English rule from it. And his reply was that the key should be turned in the gate of Dublin Castle and uh, it should be left to future generations to decide what happened. If Dublin Castle and Kilmainham Hospital were abandoned because of their colonial associations, the post office was a potent reminder of Irish martyrdom and was adopted as an emblematic building of the new state. The Office of Public Works undertook a careful and, for its time, lavish restoration completed in 1929. A memorial to the martyrs of 1916 underlines the status of the building. It depicts the mythical Irish hero, Cúhulin, who bound himself to a tree to hold his courage in the face of death. Thank you.